movement at both the top of the slope and along the slope, and it's caused debris to fall into Shoal Creek. Because of that, Shoal Creek is partially blocked, and we do consider it to be an enhanced flood risk. Um, we, em we really want to emphasize the fact that the landslide is still very unstable. We encourage the public to stay away from the landslide area and from the creek and the damage trail below it. Um, the city is monitoring the situation and we're monitoring upcoming rain events as well and we're prepared to take any action that's necessary. So with that, I'd like to go ahead and open it up for any further questions. Um, why didn't we hear about this yesterday? Um, there was a release that was sent out yesterday, okay. but uh, the city um, and its engineers were observing the landslide yesterday. Okay. Diana, what's the risk to the um, uh, homes that are up all, along the slope? Because we know that that's basically they're all sitting on a floating slab of concrete, uh, a limestone that has. So what's the risk to the homeowners? That's right. Um, we've known for some time that about four property owners are affected. Um, two of them more so than others. And there is still a risk that uh, these homes could be damaged and that the landslide can move further. What about uh, any concerns of it expanding beyond those four? At this time, we haven't observed anything that shows that uh, additional movement will go beyond the four. Uh, when, when this all started, um, uh, y'all were putting, when major, major rain events were coming, y'all were putting uh, sandbags along the storm drain, diverting stuff. Are y'all still doing that for this weekend? Yes. How does that work and why is that necessary? Um, so one of the issues or one of the factors that contributes to movement along the slope is additional water falling onto that slope. So when this event first happened, the city wanted to divert as much water away from the slope as necessary and the sandbagging along the street was part of that effort. So we're continuing to do that um, and in addition have uh, completed the design of say what is the solution is there a solution and, and I know that it's kind of city side and private property side so have y'all worked that out right so for the actual landslide solution um, we have identified an alternative that both the city and private property owners um, are uh, both agree is a, a good solution for stabilizing the slope we're currently in negotiations with those property owners but we're optimistic that we can uh, and what would that be would that be a ginormous Painting wall or what? It would actually be. Trash bags coming again. Yeah, let's hold off for a moment. <laughs> It gets louder as it passes, not as it comes. Uh, uh, okay. So, what's the solution? Is it a one ginormous retaining wall? It would be a series of walls, um, primarily two large ones with anchors that tie into the slope and secure the walls, uh, which would stabilize the slope from further movement. And how soon could that work again, and how much is that going to cost? It really depends on uh, our negotiations with the private property owners, but we do plan to. Expect to go to council on June 20th um, to get authority to negotiate contracts with engineers and contractors who perform the work. Um, the cost that has been reported in the past is anywhere from eight to sixteen million dollars. We really do expect that to fall somewhere in the middle of that. Yeah. And can you listen, how long so it be? sounds like this has been delayed for almost a year now because of negotiations with private property owners. And in the meantime, the slope is getting worse and worse. Is there a point at which the city has to just go in and do something to stabilize the slope, help the parkland underneath, stop the flood risk in the creek, and you know, not and, and, and move beyond the concerns of whoever might be up up it uphill? Sure. I think the the thing that's complicated with this situation is, in order to really stabilize the slope, it has to be a solution that addresses the entire slope. Unfortunately, that crosses property line. Um, but at this point, you know, we are very optimistic about this agreement with the private property owners, and um, 
if for some reason we needed to, to modify our solution, we would be moving forward on the exact same schedule. What is the dollar amount that you're actually asking from property owners? We do not have that information right now. Don't have that. And can you tell me, like, what is the exact uh, affected area? How much are we talking about here? Um, so the affected area, I would need to look at some further information on that. Um, with this additional movement, it's expanded slightly. Okay, so a wider area now. Slightly wider. Yeah. And so do you guys think it's going to expand more over the weekend with the rain? I don't know if you've maybe we already can't answered that. Okay. What will happen with the rain. Are but you saying the rain that we saw this past week is really the cause of this? Yeah, what caused it? It's a factor okay. in it, but it, is, it was already an unstable slope. How dangerous is it below the slope right now? Because yesterday when we did the story, the city did tell us that even more could fall down at any moment. So can you just give us some perspective on just how dangerous it is at the bottom of the slope right now? I, mean, I would say the bottom of the slope should be treated as being extremely dangerous. Where's the sticking point in the negotiations? Like I've heard rumors that the people uphill want the city to kind of pay for things that really wouldn't be in the, the purview of the city to pay for, right? The city's responsibility to the public, not to private property owners. Is that where the negotiation is stalling out? I, I mean, I can't really speak to the specifics on that, but you know, the city has very much been focused on safety being the number one uh, priority for our solution. But it's essentially around who pays for what? No. I, part of uh, the negotiations have been happening is figuring out the best solution on both properties that will uh, have a long-term uh, factor of safety and design life. Diana, this and wall can you stretch from 24th all the way? No, no. It would be shorter? Higher. It would be shorter. And for some of our readers who don't know what's been kind of going on in the past year since the landslide, happened, would you be able to just give us an update about what temporary fixes you guys have done? Well, at the time we haven't done temporary fixes because again, the whole area is hazardous. Okay. But the number one priority has been blocking it off from the public and discouraging uh, any access to the area. Is there another area of Shoal Creek that you guys are concerned about besides the one that we're focused on right now? Are um, you... Yes, sure. Are you surveying the whole creek for other areas that are collapsing or losing their walls? Right. We have not specifically um, surveyed the entire length of Shoal Creek. Is that something that you think the city should be doing, knowing that, you know, that especially that area, but also just immediate north and south of it? I mean, it's kind of a similar situation, right, with homes sitting on top of the cliff and everything. Sure. So, I, can't, I would need more further further information to speak to that. And with the plan that you guys had, um, we saw that plan about three weeks ago. So I'm wondering like how that would remain the same, knowing just from looking up, you know, at the cliff right now, the hill, a, a lot more of the land to me is missing. So like, how would that plan stay the same moving forward? Or do you need to go back to the drawing board and take away a retaining wall or put them in different places? Or I mean, the system would remain largely the same, but because there was additional movement, there might need to be um, an additional wall and anchors for that stretch of the land that we've observed. Diana, can we get Kevin to come up and talk a little bit about the, uh, the flood risk and flood claim work? Sure. Could you spell your name, too, before uh, you go? It's D-I-A-N-A, -A, last name's W-A-N-G. Great. 
Can you give your title again? Also, really quickly, just as far as like immediate response goes, it's sandbags. That's for keeping storm water off of the Okay. Yes. Is, is that the first, in the press release it says like the city will take further action if necessary. Is that the further, like, what would that further action be? I think the further, further action would be um, monitoring for flood risk primarily and making sure that any road closures or notices are percent. So the further action is monitoring. Yes. Okay. Kevin, can we get you to pop up? We're going to talk a little bit about the, the flood risk and um, what could be done. Yeah, what you are the doing. Initial, after the initial uh, uh, fall, Y'all sent crews in there, kind of cleared some of that brush away that slipped down into the uh, the creek bed. Yes. Uh, with the concern of a storm moving in this weekend, are we doing some emergency clearing out and trying to make sure that that's going to flow? So we're not at sending crews in there right now to clear it out because we have uh, a threat of rain now, and we have uh, some obviously the slope is moving, so we don't want to send crews in there at the moment to move in with any more material. We'll, we will we'll reevaluate that at the weekend. So for businesses, and I know that this is pretty much several blocks upstream, but theoretically, if we have a blockage there at 26, uh, that 2600 block, that water could back up towards some businesses. What are y'all doing to advise them to help manage this over the weekend? So there is an, an additional flood risk along North Lamar due to the increased material in the channel. That flood risk is really, it, it is really a tailor just to North Lamar itself. I think the, the risk to buildings is minimal other than saying but if those buildings are, are accessing North Lamar, there could be an issue. So just basically along North Lamar, there are flood warning crews over the weekend. We're going to be paying attention to that. We will be notifying emergency managers, uh, fire department, and police department if some road closures along the area have to have to occur. And, and you touched on this, and it's going to be a stupid question, but excuse me. How soon could you get a crew in there to start opening up that, uh, that, that channel? I'd, I'd be best for to answer. Yes, <laughs> Thanks. Well, yeah. and so... Sorry, I'm just confused. So sandbags are happening, but that's the only response right now. We're just waiting to see how the weekend goes. So the sandbagging operation has been ongoing for some time now. Okay. That will continue okay. until the, uh, the storm drain reroute, reroute project is complete, which is going to start very soon. The additional monitoring that is happening is on the slope area itself okay. and on maybe some floods that may happen along Shoal Creek. And there's, again, four homes that are still affected by this one today, the additional movement. Say again? There are four homes that are affected by the additional movement. I'd, I'd like to add that. Same, same four. Okay. Yeah. And can you say where the sandbagging operation is? So the sandbagging operation is along Woolbridge Drive. Along Woolbridge Drive. Okay. Your name again? Kevin Shunk, S-H-U-N-K. Kevin, has the city done any calculations to, like if we got an inch of rain, other parts of Shoal Creek Trail, if anyone were to be caught walking and then a downpour happens, I mean, has the city thought about the risk there? Yeah, we have We have determined uh, how much water do we need to be concerned about, and when it gets up to those levels, that's when we'll talk to the emergency managers and the FTA to address the, the issues along Shoal Creek and North mm -hmm. Lamar itself. What's that number? That number, I don't know what the number is on the top of my head. We can get that to you. We have it. We just don't know it off the top of our So head. it sounds like starting today, you're going to have 24 monitoring, 24 hour monitoring out there, people watching that creek and the flow? Uh, we have 24 hour 7 monitoring of the rainfall that's happening in the city. I can't say that we'll have 24 hour monitoring on the slope itself. We will monitor it over the weekend, though, as the rainfall continues. And when you say monitor, does that mean crews are going out and looking at it? Generally, yes. Okay. Technical guy. 
from a technical aspect, when you go out there and you see what's happening, what what's happening? What's the dynamic? You know, is this is it just the saturation and, and it's just a lot of chert, a lot of weight, and it's just gonna it's a slippery literally a slippery slope. I give you some your name and title too. Eric Laux, E R I C L O U C K S. I'm the supervising engineer with Watershed Protection Department. So again, is it just as simple as you know it's it's wet, it's soggy, and it's literally a slippery yeah, the, slope? The water adds weight, and everything's unstable. There's a big uh, rock fall up up top, right below the slope. Uh, it's all sitting on clay and mud, and it gets saturated and very soft, almost fluid, and and changes occur. Is there danger to people up top? They, they, you know, they, they, their properties might slide down? The, there's been, on Wednesday night, that's part of what happened. They lost a little bit of additional property up there. Uh, there were several movements up top and down below. Uh, I think the toe of the slope moved 10 to 15 feet into the creek. And so, I don't know if people are still living there, but I mean, that would be safe. Yes. Uh, the, the properties that are most at risk are, have both been vacated. And uh, they're also using fencing to, to, keep, uh, to keep the public out. Do you know how many people were in those two properties? No. Okay. So just two properties vacated? I, I, I know two are vacated. I don't know the status of the other two. Diana, those were voluntarily, I guess. Okay. And it really was just rain and it was already unstable and it all just Yes. Fell. Okay. And, and we've been saying it's unstable because experts have been telling us it's unstable since the day it happened. And we've observed small movements from time to time in the past year, and but this is the first very large, significant move. Okay. This may be a question for Diana too, but uh, just the process the city went through, I'm just wondering why it couldn't be faster than a year to come up with a plan? Because if we knew like a retaining walls were going to be a solution, why couldn't we have done that? You know, It takes some time, and, and both the city and the property owners have certain interests, and we want to make sure those interests are properly served, and uh, this was a first for those property owners, so they're naturally concerned and wary, and uh, didn't want to rush into this, so we, we moved as quickly as possible. Very close to a solution. I mean, with this big movement, is there any like, do you want to move quicker now that this has happened? This is movement that we've been expecting all along, and uh, we're we're moving as quickly as we can, both before and after this event. Okay.